one of my Twitter, I'm sorry, Instagram followers and most likely subscribers tagged me in this post on Instagram and I was wrestling back and forth whether or not I was going to talk about it. But I said, you know what? It literally goes right into that live stream that I did the other night about the LGBT community and the toxic behavior that comes from them, especially when they try to label heterosexual black men as dangerous and a threat to them. This story right here, I can understand why it did not make its rounds in lamestream media the way that it did. But guess what? I have no attachments to lamestream media, so I'm going to talk about it. And also, I I, I think this story happened maybe in another uh, another country. I want to say Mexico. I'm not entirely sure. The reason why I'm saying that is because all the dialogue that I'm seeing about it is in Spanish. So it had to come from a Spanish speaking country. It could have been Mexico. It could have been somewhere in Latin America, anywhere. But I want to say Mexico. I'm just guessing at this point. But I've talked about toxic femininity. But today we're going to talk about toxic misandry. And that's basically the um, the uh, I guess you could say the foundation for this story. Now, misandry is basically the female version of a misogynist, which is the intense hatred for the male species. And this story right here defines it to a T in, un, in a very unfortunate way. So in this picture, you see this little boy who, according to the story, that was tagged to me and is in English. I was able to uh, retrieve one in English. His name is Ruan. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. It's spelled R H U A U N. Now, the two people that sit in the picture next to him, I don't know their names because they didn't put it out there. But these two women are lesbians and they are a couple. And they did one of the worst things I think I have ever seen or ever heard of that could be done in probably modern history right now not to say that is such a shock but it's very disturbing because of the practice that they did and who they did it on you know what i'm just going to go ahead and read this and i and i don't even want to try to explain it off the top of my head it says american media are remain are remaining silent over this crime a nine-year-old boy by the name of ruan was stabbed to death as he slept after suffering a botched gender reassignment surgery. That's just the first sentence. I have plenty more to read. The boy had kind of a sex change surgery. After cutting into and removing the penis, they sewed the mutilated region and improvised a version of a female genital organ, making a cut in the groin. The boy suffered and died, and then the child's body was found dismembered, decapitated, and with the skin torn off. In addition, the officials found the boy in two school bags and a suitcase. The, boy, the murdered boy had a little sister who was eight years old, who lived with the alleged murderers in the house, in which the crime perpetrated suffered no injuries. The surgery had apparently been performed with no medical supervision after Ruan's mother had decided to turn her son into a girl. Ruan's father had previously contacted Child Protective Services and the police after expressing concerns about the welfare of his son. Ruan's father told the press, we tried to save Ruan. We published messages on the social media. We contacted the police in the child protective services no one helped us there is a multitude of things wrong with this but let me go back and retract something right quick this could have very well did happen here in the states but it's just that all the outlets that i've read about this were all in spanish so that's why i assume that maybe it happened in a spanish-speaking country but it could have very well happened here it's just that because um they had the dialect of speaking Spanish. That's why all the outlets who put it out there was in Spanish. So luckily I found this one in English, which means somebody may have found it in Spanish, but translated it over. So I am appreciative of that. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of this. And it, this is a very dark story, as you can tell what I just read. So these two women hate the male specimen so much 
that the mother, and I'm not sure which one of these is the mother, decided that they were going to turn their boy into a girl by killing him and cutting off his genital area to try to turn it into a vagina and then dismembered him, decapitated him, which means they had to remove his head and found him in three different bags, which means all his limbs were put into three separate compartments. And I feel bad for the dad. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can find a picture. I think this is the dad right here. This is the dad right here with his son. I feel bad for him because he tried to get his son away from these two and nobody helped. This also goes back into why many people say we live in a gynocentric uh, society right now because they were willing to allow this boy to stay with those two toxic women and look at what they did to them, did to him. This almost reminds me, of course, again, of the De, of Deon, uh, Devontae Hart and his family, two white lesbian women who were toxic as all hell, did what they did to those kids. And now all those children are dead. Same thing here. Those two toxic lesbian women destroyed that boy. Hell, you can throw Charlize Theron in there. She's not a lesbian as far as we know, but she look at what she's doing to the boy she adopted. At this point, I don't want to call that boy her son. I mean, that's just on paper. It's not like the boy came out of her. But look at what she's doing with her son. I mean, with her boy, with that boy. Putting him in dresses and blonde wigs and saying that that's her um, daughter when that boy has an XY chromosome. But these two hated men in the male specimen so much that they mutilated this boy. They killed him, dismembered him and put him in two three separate bags and discarded him like he was nothing only only nine years old just nine i know why mainstream is not putting it out there because it's pride month and they don't want the tox something like this to come out but like i said i'm not attached to lamestream media so they really can't put a parameter on what I put out there. This may very well be the first time you're ever hearing this story. But I'm almost certain there's probably more out there like this. But I have never heard something like this before in my life. That's why I was kind of going back and forth whether to talk about it or not. Because believe it or not, I get a lot of stories. As many of you know. But sometimes some of these stories are just like, whoa. But. The reason why I'm doing it is because there is an element that never gets talked about when it comes to that community. And this is it right here. This goes beyond toxic femininity. This goes beyond feminism. Feminism, we already know what their deal is. That toxic femininity, we know what that is. They have a, a they hate men or they don't like men, but they'll tolerate it. But misandry is they just hate everything about a man or the male species. Now, notice that they killed and they brutally murdered this boy, but the little girl, his sister, the eight-year-old, is alive. If that girl was born a boy, she would probably be dead too. But that's some that's wild. Like I said, I only feel bad for the dad. They need to get. They need to uh, destroy for a lack of much better words I could use, these two women right here. I don't care how they do it, but I hope it's slow, and I hope it's brutal, and I hope it's intensely painful. They do not deserve to live after what they've done. And people act like the that community is so uh, such a victim, and, you know, they always trying to fight for social status and acceptance and everything like that but i doubt many of them will talk about this they'll claim they didn't know and that's you know that's a given because it's not out there for consumption i we had to go on the internet to find this well i had to go on the internet well someone had to find it for me to send it to me
and it, on Instagram of all places. And like I said, because they don't have the two women's name attached to it, you can only go off the little boy's name. And then that's when articles will start to pop up. But it's not even many articles. It's probably about five in total. Now, this picture you're looking at came from four days ago, but I'm recording it on June 14th. So it came out on June 10th. But yeah, like that, like that's just wild. But like I said, I offer my condolences to the dad and the dad only because at least he tried to get the boy away from them. But I also hold the courts and the law enforcement or whoever else did not hear his pleas accountable as well, because they're just a, they're just as much at fault as these two. If they were able to get away, get him away from him, them sooner, he would still be alive. And they also need to get make sure that little girl is not around them either. But I'm sure that with the, where they're headed, I'm sure the girl is probably most likely in good hands right now. Now, I don't know if the little girl is his child or maybe a uh a child with some other person but if it is his he needs to have full custody as of right now y'all let me know what y'all think about this story down in the comments like share subscribe i will talk to you in the next one